Hi everyone, my name is Michael Keane and I work as a project manager within the Ferries team at Transport Scotland and the presentation I am about to deliver will cover our role within the programme and some of the policy work which will be undertaken. So in terms of our role, Transport Scotland is responsible to Scottish ministers for the overall delivery of the programme and we also need to ensure that the objectives are consistent with Scottish Government policy. A crucial part of what we do relates to the preparation of business cases. Our internal investment decision making board considers the strategic, outline and final business cases at various stages in the programme. Just by way of an update, the strategic business case was approved in November last year, which has led to the successful appointment of naval architects and design consultants. Another key aspect of the programme for which Transport Scotland plays a crucial role is the Vessel Statement of Operational Requirements. We set out the high-level service requirements for the route and provide these to the operator. CalMac then clearly defines the operational requirements and creates a formal Statement of Operational Requirements document. This is then provided to CMAL and is used as a basis to proceed with the development options of the concept vessel design. In terms of our overall objectives, the programme seeks to improve the resilience, sustainability and accessibility of both the Guruk to Dunoon and Guruk to Kokregan services by building new vessels which are purposely designed for the routes. It also seeks to build resilient infrastructure at the ports and retain an alternative mainland port facility at Guruk, which will support Butte and Arran services. This next slide focuses on the recent ministerial decision. In December 2018, ministers announced that the tender for the Guruk to Dunoon ferry service would be cancelled and a passenger only service would be provided by CalMac from the 21st of January 2019. The decision to cancel the tender reflected the findings of Audit Scotland's report on Transport Scotland's ferry services, which was published in October 2017. Audit Scotland recommended that while the tender exercise was paused, Transport Scotland should consider the value for money of providing financial support to the route. As a result of this, and due to the fact that no bids for a separate vehicle service were received as part of the tender exercise, it was decided that the Guruk to Dunoon ferry service would proceed as a passenger only service. Moving forward, we will replace the existing second-hand vessels with dedicated passenger-only vessels which are optimised for the route and improve the overall resilience of the service. If I can now turn to some policy work which is underway, um, Transport Scotland is currently developing an islands connectivity plan which, in part, will replace the current ferries plan by the end of 2022. The plan itself will be developed within the policy context provided by the recently published National Transport Strategy and National Islands Plan and will be closely linked to the emerging Strategic Transport Projects Review. In order to consider island connectivity more broadly, it will incorporate aviation, ferries, fixed links and connecting and onward travel. Part of this work will include a community needs and market assessment of all routes within the Clyde and Hebrides ferry service network and the Guruk to Dunoon and Guruk to Kilcreggan routes will be appraised over the coming weeks and months. This work will be taken forward using the routes and services methodology. The methodology will focus on six key steps, identifying the needs of the community, Defining the ferry service profile that fits the community's needs. Defining the current ferry service profile. Comparing the current and proposed service profiles to identify gaps in provision. Proposing and appraising options for addressing gaps in service provision. And prioritising options to be taken forward in the short, medium and long term. I would like to provide some background information as to how the routes and services methodology work was undertaken as part of the ferries review. Community needs for ferry services were assessed against four dependencies using 11 
quantitative indicators. The four dependencies were daily commuting, personal travel for essential services, but not daily, for example, healthcare, freight, both import and export, and finally, tourism. The dependencies and sailing time were used to produce a consistent model service profile for both summer and winter. This was then compared to the existing service and a gap analysis was generated. The ferries plan then set out how gaps would be met and had to take account of what was and what was not realistic with regards service patterns, for example, frequency and length of day. So going forward and as part of the work relating to the island's connectivity plan, the community needs assessment will refresh and focus on the following elements. Dependencies based on routes and services methodology indicators and verifying those findings with communities. Model service profiles and update current service profiles, taking into account issues such as reliability and capacity. Consider and consult on options on how gaps can be addressed, including by aviation and current and or fixed links. Assess the options against policy objectives, stag criteria, and overall value for money and affordability considerations. And finally, consider how to capture future and current needs based on existing development plans. Moving on to the market assessment. This focuses on whether identified connectivity needs are being met or could be met without government intervention. So government intervention in a market is typically justified to correct a market failure or to address social welfare concerns such as access to healthcare. Market failure in ferry services could appear as an undesirable level of market concentration, fare levels which are economically disadvantageous, connectivity or accessibility constraints for certain groups of users, dependence on services with suboptimal performance and insufficient capacity. So in terms of assessing market failure, this requires an evidence-based approach to the following. Establishing service requirements, assessing the adequacy of current services, and considering whether an adequate service could be provided by the market without government intervention. Now, there is a wide range of discretion in law for governments to define what constitutes adequate service provision, which extends to socioeconomic factors such as the need for communities to prosper and grow in line with wider government plans and objectives. And as mentioned before, the above methodology will be applied to each and every route on the Clyde and Hebrides ferry service network and all elements of the community needs assessment and assessing market need will be evaluated as this work progresses over the coming months. So I just want to finish up by saying that it's an exciting programme to be involved in and we believe that good progress has been made to date. We are aware that there will be a lot of interest in the programme, so if you would like to leave feedback or ask a question on the content of this presentation in particular, you can do so by emailing gdkprogram at transport.gov.scot. Thank you.